Hi parents, this video is intended to help you how to use the material that I'm about to send home. Uh, so first, you're going to get this. This is the alphabet chart with the sounds and letters, uppercase and lowercase, to help you guys, uh, help your kid, especially for those that don't know the letters and sound yet. We're going to start here because this gives them the foundation and kind of memorize, you know, mass, mm, 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 mm. So once they, and it's in uh, boxes of four and I label them because we're going to start with the one and then two and three and four. Make sure they know these before you move on because if you do too many of them, it overwhelms their brain and they cannot get it. And once you think, oh, little Johnny, he knows M, A, T, and D, let me test him. And just like how I tested, uh, you know, the kids, you cut out these alphabet and you just hold it up and it's a quickie because like I say, within 60 seconds, one minute, they have to know the upper K, the lower case, and the sound. So you just flash them. What letter is this? A, what sound does it make? Ah, what letter is this? M, what sound does it make? Mm, what letter is this? D, what sound does it make? D, what letter is this? T, it makes T. So that's what you use these cards for that I'm sending home. So that's your flashcard that you can use to test them to make sure they know them. Because, you know, uh, sometimes we think they know them, but when we test them, they're like, hmm, nah, then not yet. And then also you're getting some pictures with uh, these cards. And these pictures, what you do is uh, you say car, and you ask them, what sound do you hear when you say car? K they should be able to, tell you they hear the k car they may not know what letter makes the k sound yet until they learn the letter c but they can hear the sound k. and we want to practice having them hear those sounds because those sounds eventually help them learn how to read and write okay so once again like frog what do you hear when you say frog f do you hear the f in the beginning, they may not hear it, so you're gonna have to stretch out the sound for them. Listen, frog, do you hear it? F do you hear the f sound? Yeah. And so with more practice, they will hear those beginning sounds. And later, once they learn all of the letters and sound, they can match these to the letters and sound. But meanwhile, we use it to help them hear the sound. So if you say, uh, water, what do you hear? Yes, we want them to hear the sound. Now, later, once they learn all of the letters and sound, they can match it with the uppercase and lowercase. You're also going to get a set of numbers that looks like this that I can't find. <laughs> and pretty much you cut it out just like this, but we don't learn on numbers this way because if we just flash them and say, this is a four, memorize the four, it's hard for them. So what we do is I made a video on how to create a number strip just from one to 10. And most of our babies, when I test them, they know how to count to 10, which is great. Then they can just touch and count each one. And then if you show them a number and they don't remember, they can go one, two, three, four. Oh, that's the number four. Do you know this number? If they don't know it, they can use their number strip to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's a number eight. But eventually we want to wean them off of that because eventually we want them to be able to just tell us what number is this? Eight. What number is this? One. What number is this? Ten. Just like the letters and sound. It has to be quick because the sooner they can recognize the number, the sooner we can use it to add the number and subtract the number. And you know, we're going to work on one-to-one -one correspondence too, and that is number sets. So you're also going to get this with the numbers. You're going to get this, these wonderful little stars, which, you know, when you need them, you can't find them. <laughs> and so what they do with these cards that you cut it out, and they touch and count. We never guess. The only time that, uh, that they have to say a number of quantity that's called sabotizing, but we're gonna do that later. Right now, we want them to touch and count. We don't want them to guess. If we ask them how many is here, we don't want them to say, oh, two. No, how do you know it's two? Because I touched it and I counted. One, two, three, four, five, six. And actually it's not two, it is six. So we want them to be able to count them 
And then once they know their numbers, they can match these cards to the number that corresponds to the picture. So that would go with the number six. But until they know their numbers and until they know the one-to-one -one correspondence, they're not going to be able to match them. I included up to 20 because some of our kids already know up to 10. So I don't want to hold them back. So that's what you're getting. And some of you will get um, rhyming cards and they look like this. And rhyming cards are listening to uh, ending sounds. Because you know how we do these cards where we listen to the beginning sound, which is alliteration. Alliteration is beginning sound. It's go, g, g, go. Uh, rhyming is ending sound. So like when you say cat, what do you hear at the end of cat? At, at, at. And when you say bat, what do you hear at the end of bat? B, at, at, at. So those two words rhyme because they end the same. Bat, at, at, at. Cat, at, at, at. But when you say cat, at, at, at. Dog, og, og, og. Those two do not rhyme because they do not start the same. And our baby is going to get confused between alliteration and rhyming. And that's how come it is good to begin now and asking them to hear the beginning sound and to hear the ending sound because it takes our year. And uh, the sooner we get on it, the sooner we practice, um, the sooner they will get it. And I think that's all the material I'm sending you. And if you have any question or concern, you know where to reach me. Thank you.